Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the prophet zechariah tells us israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against jerusalem zechariah 12 2 and 3 behold i will make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against judah and jerusalem and it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Hamas makes rare public appeal to Muslim nations in the region for more support in the war with Israel. A senior Hamas official based in Lebanon has called for stronger support from regional allies, including Hezbollah. We're going to go to Ali Hashem, who's in Nakora in southern Lebanon. So what is Hamas seeking from its allies, Ali? Well, since the beginning of uh, this uh, conflict uh, on the 7th of October, uh, there have been several meetings between Hezbollah and uh, Hamas leaders. Actually, just a couple of days ago, Saleh al-Aruri, uh, Hamas's deputy politburo, met with Hassan Nasrallah and the uh, Secretary General of the Islamic Jihad. Now, we've been hearing several uh, Hamas officials calling on more support from Hezbollah on more activity on the uh, northern uh, border, with uh, on Lebanon's southern border with, uh, with Israel. And uh, today there was uh, uh, Ghazi Hamad, a uh, Hamas official, who spoke to uh, agencies. And let's listen uh, to what he said. Our philosophy and our vision to open all the fronts. We want all parts to participate the resistance against the occupation. We want to open all the borders for all people. Because I, I think it is not logic that the, the people in Gaza, they are just fighting and they are uh, uh, targeted and they are killed and they are murdered. I think this is a duty of all Muslims and Arabs in this region to support our people. We want to fight against the occupation in the Lebanese front, in the Jordanian front, in the whole Arabic front, everywhere. There is a prophecy written by Asaph the seer that many end time teachers believe has yet to find fulfillment. In this prophecy, a confederation of Muslim nations have taken crafty counsel against the Jewish people in Israel in order to destroy them as we read in Psalm 83, 1-8. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. On wildfires started by gunfire breaking out in southern Lebanon as clashes between the IDF and Hezbollah intensify. It comes as Iranian terror proxies continue to escalate threats against the U.S. and allies in the region. Senior Foreign Affairs Correspondent Greg Palcott, he's live there in northern Israel for us. Greg, what can you tell us at this hour? The latest thing that we heard was small arms fire not too far away from us. We're right up against the Israel-Lebanon border. We've witnessed escalating exchanges between the IDF, the Israeli military, and the Lebanon-based Iran-backed Hezbollah militants. In the last 24 hours, four Hezbollah rockets were fired not far from us, which got 10 return blasts from nearby Israeli artillery. Both sides have been keeping the skirmishes basically near the border, but there are reports of Israel launching fighter jet and drone strikes deeper into Lebanon as the toll grows. 46 Hezbollah fighters killed in the last two weeks, at least six Israeli soldiers, along with civilian casualties. A very telling picture just released, a meeting in Beirut, Lebanon, between a top Hamas official, the leader of another militant group, and the head of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah. Behind them, pictures of past and present leaders of their benefactor, Iran. Here's what Benny Gantz in Israel's war cabinet said about the fight with Hezbollah. 
The IDF had a thick and very strong shield along the entire northern border on all its fronts. There are significant casualties to Hezbollah. I suggest to our enemy not to get confused. Our power is tremendous, ready to launch, and they better beware. Zechariah goes on to tell us in verse 6 that God will use the Israeli defense forces to destroy the Muslim nations that seek their destruction. In that day I will make the governors of Judah like a firepan in the woodpile, and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, Jerusalem. What about Turkey? I mean, they're housing many of these Hamas leaders, and they've been on their side for many years, uh, also on the side of ISIS when they were fighting uh, in, in Syria. So what about Turkey and Erdogan? Well, you know, Gary, I've been uh, calling for years uh, ever since 9-11, as a matter of fact, for a realignment of our alliances. And Turkey is the principal uh, instance of the fact that our alliances are based on old, outmoded co Cold War models that have no applica applicability anymore. Turkey is not really an ally of the United States. It's on the side of Hamas and the global jihad. They are just illustrating this yet again now in this new conflict. They have no business being in NATO. NATO ally Turkey praises Hamas as liberation group, accuses Israel of savage attack on Gaza. Turkey's Erdogan says Hamas is not terrorist organization, cancels trip to Israel. Libya orders out ambassadors from US, UK, France, and Italy over support for Israel. The puzzle pieces are falling rapidly into place concerning a prophecy relating to Russia, Iran, Turkey, and Libya. Known as the War of Gog and Magog, spoken of by the prophet Ezekiel. Turkey is a member of NATO, making them an ally of the United States. But as we can see by recent events, Turkey is siding with Hamas and the US is siding with Israel. While Libya expelled ambassadors from the United States, UK, France, and Italy because they all support Israel. The prophetic stage has been set and the actors are now in motion. The Bible is clear that Turkey and Libya will be allied with Russia and Iran in the last days. The prophet Ezekiel tells us the nations invading Israel have come to take a spoil, as we read in Ezekiel 38, 10-12. Thus says the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people, who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against the people gathered from the nations, who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Bethgarma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes. Many peoples are with you, be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, 
all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountain shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin, the infamous Gog of Magog, that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator, who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Breaking news for our viewers in the West, the latest on the Israel-Hamas war. This morning, a rocket struck an apartment building in Tel Aviv. Matt Gutman is on the scene. Good morning, Matt. George, good morning. We're in South Tel Aviv, the site of that uh, rocket strike here. You can see a number of apartment buildings here completely blown out. The backside of the building, that wall cleaved off completely. Um, Israeli medical sources tell us that a number of people were wounded here. And we're going to have our cameraman come right here. You can see there's actually somebody uh, being tended to right on the ground over there. Medics rushing over to try to help. We don't know what happened there. You see a large number of police presence, civilians here. And this shows Hamas's continued capacity to fire those longer range rockets on cities like Tel Aviv, Haifa in the north, a lot in the south. This despite that massive aerial bombardment of Gaza by Israel for the 20th consecutive day. Um, tremendous amount of ordnance. We've seen entire blocks pulverized into that gray dust. Um, mothers screaming in the streets for their children, those rescuers clawing through the rubble. And Israel launched its largest incursion into the Gaza Strip yet with um, bulldozers and armored personnel carriers and tanks as well. You can hear someone screaming behind us. 
And we haven't seen that yet. This as Israel continues this massive debate internally among the political military echelon about what to do with this incursion, whether to launch it now or wait for negotiations to play out. We hear that Qatar is working urgently to facilitate the release of a large number of hostages. We're told up to 50 hostages could be released possibly in the coming days. U.S. fighter jets launched airstrikes early today against two locations in eastern Syria. Those locations are linked to Iran's Revolutionary Guard, and the Pentagon made it clear the strikes were in self-defense after attacks on American forces. Israel continues its retaliatory campaign against Hamas in Gaza ahead of its planned ground invasion. Chris Mitchell brings us the latest from Jerusalem. The Pentagon announcing U.S. planes launched strikes against Iranian-backed militias after repeated attacks on U.S. bases in Syria and Iraq by drones and rockets. Again, it is our aim to avoid any regional expansion of Israel's conflict with Hamas, but we stand ready and prepared to protect and defend our partners and our interests, and will act to do so. Finally, in terms of force protection, uh, it, the message is simple. As Secretary Austin has consistently made clear, we will take all necessary measures to defend our troops and our interests overseas. The U.S. attack coming as Israeli troops, tanks and armor conducted a raid into the central Gaza Strip for the second night in a row. The IDF says it struck a number of command and control centers and Hamas terrorists. The IDF also kept up its air campaign and says it has killed a number of Hamas leaders responsible for the October 7th massacre of Jews. Israel is continuing to ask residents of northern Gaza to flee the area and release this phone conversation with a resident of Gaza who says Hamas is stopping people from getting out of harm's way. <laughs> Iran's foreign minister called on Israel to stop its air attacks on Gaza and warned the war might expand to other parts of the Middle East. I have realized that according to the scenarios set by Hezbollah, any step the resistance will take will result in a huge earthquake against the Zionist entity. He also warned at the UN that they will strike the U.S. if Israel persists in its bombing of the Gaza Strip. Amid the fighting, former U.S. envoy Jason Greenblatt strongly criticized President Joe Biden's call for a two-state solution, allowing for a Palestinian state in the Middle East just three weeks after the killing of 1,400 Israelis, tweeting, there's no going back to the status quo. In the U.S., Christians showing their support for Israel. Liberty University held a prayer vigil. Because we ask that you break our heart for what breaks yours, Lord. And on Thursday, a roundtable of Christian leaders in America also spoke out on behalf of the Jewish state. The American Christian Leaders for Israel is a network of Christian leaders who collaborate in support of Israel and the Jewish people. And in just five days, we were able to garner the signatures of over 115 Christian leaders from over 100 organizations to sign on three letters. The well-being of Israel and the Jewish people worldwide is important to us. And so we wanted to add the strength of our voice to that of the people of Israel and the various Jewish organizations working on these issues. We continue, continue to pray for all of those, including the Palestinians who have been placed in harm's way by Hamas, not by Israel. And, and NRB stands in complete and full support of Israel. And we bless all the people of Israel and we will continue to pray for them. Psalm 122.6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem means praying for Jesus' return as he is the only one who brings true peace when he returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords at his second coming. Breaking news overnight, U.S. airstrikes in Syria on facilities used by Iranian forces and their proxies. The move is in retaliation for recent rocket and drone attacks targeting U.S. forces as tensions rise in the region following the Hamas terror attack on Israel. In the midst of this war raging in Israel, the U.S. does not want this conflict to spread, but the administration feeling it could not let the spate of attacks on U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria go unpunished. Overnight, retaliation. 
In the skies above Syria's border with Iraq, a pair of American F-16 fighter jets targeting two munitions facilities the Pentagon says were linked to a spate of recent rocket and drone attacks on U.S. forces in the region. Both facilities, says the Pentagon, aligned with Iranian-backed militias. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin saying the United States does not seek conflict and has no intention nor desire to engage in further hostilities, but these Iranian-backed attacks against U.S. forces are unacceptable and must stop. There have been at least 19 attacks on American forces in Iraq and Syria, leaving nearly two dozen U.S. service members with minor injuries, including symptoms of traumatic brain injury. The attacks on Americans escalate as the war in Israel heats up. Earlier this week, President Biden warning Iran's supreme leader. My warning to the Ayatollah was that if they continue to move against those troops, we will respond, and he should be prepared. But while the U.S. stopped short of targeting Iran itself, a senior U.S. official saying Iran's fingerprints were all over these attacks. One week ago, the Pentagon shooting down numerous missiles and drones it said were launched from Iranian-backed militants in Yemen aimed in the direction of Israel and a U.S. destroyer in the Red Sea. Tensions in the South China Sea. The Pentagon released a new video of a Chinese fighter jet coming dangerously close to a U.S. bomber flying in international airspace. ABC's Terry Moran has more. In the dead of night over the South China Sea, a Chinese fighter jet came within just 10 feet of an American B-52 bomber, an encounter so dangerous the Pentagon says that it seems the Chinese pilot was unaware of how close he came to causing a collision. What should have been a fairly routine intercept got way too close and more dangerous than it needed to be. Just last week, the Pentagon declassified several videos and photos of what U.S. officials called coercive and risky behavior by Chinese pilots in the last year and a half. U.S. officials warn China is increasingly trying to intimidate U.S. aircraft flying over international waters, while China's defense ministry blames the U.S. for flying over territory it considers its own. The risks of an accidental collision are even greater now, with China rebuffing U.S. attempts to restart a military hotline. The latest incident comes as China's top diplomat, Wang Yi, is in Washington this week, meeting President Biden's top advisors as they try to stabilize U.S.-China relations. Russia preparing for nuclear war. Moscow fired several ballistic missiles on Wednesday in response to what it is calling an eventual external attack. Since its full-scale assault on Ukraine began, Russia has wielded the atomic threat several times. The drills took place hours after the Upper House of Parliament voted to rescind the ratification of the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty after it was approved by the Duma last week. The exercises, conducted some 800 kilometres north of the capital, were closely monitored by President Vladimir Putin, Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu and the Army's Chief of Staff Valery Gerasimov. The bill will now go to Putin for the final green light. While Russia conducts similar drills every autumn, there is growing concern the Kremlin might increase nuclear testing to discourage Ukraine's Western allies from providing military support. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24:21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, 
loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.